Y'all, welcome back to Kentucky Fried Poor Gaming, where two guys who aren't qualified to talk about anything decide to talk about a game with hard math and chance. I'm Joe. And I'm John. And on this episode, I hit the intro on the first run like a professional. Yep, he didn't mess it up this time. That's not a joke. It's true. Every other time, messes it up. This time, he's too amped to fuck up. Ooh, we're ready to go. Um, This week, we're getting a little more topical. I'd say maybe the most topical, because... There's been a bunch of reveals for Games Workshop uh, and all of their products, which, for better or worse, is the uh, is kind of the biggest dog in town. And they seem to have the most interest and attention, especially from our viewers. So we thought it'd be worth it to take uh, what they call Warhammer Fest that was spread out over four days and try to condense it to maybe help y'all catch up if you didn't make all the reveals. Because I'm going to be honest, it was hard to keep up with them. There was a lot coming hot and heavy. Uh, yeah. There were live streams, like, every day. All sorts of reveals out of it. A bunch of articles. And I know if I wasn't really trying for the show, I might have had a hard time to keep up. So we went through, we scrubbed through, and we've tried to condense it down to what we hope is a uh, sensible and easy to understand sort of bundle where you can get all of your news here. And then if you hear anything that really piques your interest, uh, head to the Warhammer community website where you'll find articles talking about whatever topic you're particularly interested in, in depth. Because if we tried to put every bit of detail in here, our, well, the episode would be way too long and we'd probably fall asleep. But we, we honestly probably could have done four whole episodes out of this Warhammer Fest, so... Man, and we're the... probably going to have multiple coming from this Warhammer Fest. So let's just, this is the overview. <laughs> yeah, We might as well start high and then hone in to get real precise. You know, we, just like CSI, we just say enhance a whole lot. It Get deeper down the rabbit hole. Don't you talk about NCIS to me. I mean, I said CSI, but I assume they're very similar shows. <laughs> I never watched NCIS, John. Oh no. <laughs> Are we going to watch NCIS together? I, John, I guess. It sounds like a great thing to do while drunk. Uh, no. <laughs> yes, John. It's happening. But first, hobby tie and games played. All right, John. I'm Googling where to watch NCIS, but while I do that, what have you been up to for the past? Two weeks, gaming and hobbying. Two weeks? Oh, yeah. So, like, the first week, I did do some painting. Like, I did I did paint some more trailer like, Yeah, John, we put the show out every other week. And I did I did prime. I did do a lot Gosh. of priming. I did a lot of painting. I did a lot of detail work. I did a lot of that. I did a lot of reading of the books. Uh, this last week, though, I have done zero painting. I have done some printing, and I have, like, built some models, but that's it. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot other than do Warhammer Fest stuff, work, and uh, been doing some more things with cooking. Mm -hmm. That's been interesting. Um, a little bit more reading. And uh, to be completely honest, I played a lot of Mech Warrior, so you know, you know how it be. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to finish this month's challenge events, the Mech Mayhem event. Yes. So we have I to gotta, play more Mech Warrior. We do play more Mech Warrior. Um, That's what we do outside the show, by the way, everybody. We just play Mech Warrior with one another. And just talk about big. We talk about the show while playing Big Robot. It's it's pretty great. It's so fun. And if y'all haven't played Mech Warrior online, it is the most delightful place where it's just a bunch of like truck driving peepaws that play this giant robot game. It's a very different situation than a COD lobby. It's like the antithesis of it. Um, it's it's so fun. Um, but yeah, I mean, you said you did some printing. What have you been printing up? So, uh, I've been printing up more, uh, Chaos Guard vehicles to convert and move mm -hmm. around. Um, because I, I heretic. Like, yeah, I want, I want a different style than the normal GW. So they look more like World War II tanks. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so like, I, I've been printing up basilisks, printing some more Lehman Russes, um, working on printing some other stuff. 
I've also been printing um, stuff from Loot Studios to make some dioramas when I need like a, a filler. So I'm just pre-printing some stuff for when I know I'm going to need that like break in between stuff. And uh, I also took some time this week for reasons we'll find out in the show and pulled out a bunch of my chaos models and looked at them and went, ah, my edgy, edgy boys. <laughs> Your time is coming. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you're trying to get ready for like the next step up of our crusade game. Yes. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. Well, now we're going to get you back on the paint trade, John. Do I need to bully you? I will bully you. I'm getting back on the paint train today. Like, I've already decided I'm spending some time towards the end of the day once all my uh, responsibilities are done with, and I'm going to paint some models. Ooh, I might catch up with you on Discord later and help paint models. Because I also... Well, actually, I've been on the paint train, but still. It's good you to never keep the hobby the progress going. That's true. You, you live on the paint train. I do. I've tried to make it more habitual rather than just something I do sporadically. You know what else we could, I wish we could get more habitual? Hmm. Um, public transportation in the United States, because I really want more trains. Yeah, I would really like that option. Uh, as someone who took the public transit system for like seven years here in the U.S., it's terrible and it's awful. And I also watched a, a couple of really entry, interesting videos watching uh, and exploring how the auto industry uh, corruptly set up the entirety of our infrastructure system to directly benefit them and cars. And it was what led to single housing development and the suburbia. It was an intentional ploy to make sure that people had to buy more cars while, and while sabotaging all of the public transit that they possibly could so that you would have to buy a car. And even now, many, many decades later, most zoning is actually illegal to be anything other than single-family housing. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I hate Strodes. God, I hate Strodes. Uh... All right, we got to get back <laughs> is this on this an infrastructure we, podcast. We got to we got to we got to talk to the about infrastructure cuz I we have could, thoughts. We could talk about infrastructure. We've done it before for hours. We should not do it in the Warhammer Fest episode. <laughs> <laughs> Someone out there is going to be like, "What the hell's a strode?" If I, if at some point one of the listeners go, "We wanted you to compare and contrast modern US dystopian infrastructure mixed with the infrastructure 40K." We will do that. But like, I'm <laughs> happy to. I will get <laughs> cabbagey uh <laughs> yeah i will look up strong town's entire document and pull it and compare it to terra at 40k um, <laughs> there's a lot of trains in the siege of terra that's all i'm saying like we, <laughs> I, their public transit is on point largely because everyone's too impoverished to own anything more than a spork but at least you have public transit to get to your 20 hour a day job Anyway, <laughs> if you want to know what a Strode is, look up a YouTube channel called Not Just Bikes, and they have an episode on Strodes. You'll have a blast. Um, but I Joe, have... what have you been painting? <laughs> <laughs> Man, we've getting in the weeds before. <laughs> We're in the weeds so bad, there are velociraptors creeping up on me. Um, I have been uh, working away on that uh, broadside, Last episode, I talked about how I had uh, built it and primed it and zenithalled it, uh, and I have spent the past two weeks painting that up entirely. So it is done, done. Uh, I got all the base coats on, I got it washed, and just uh, Friday night? Yeah, just Friday, I finished up the plasma weapon effects, uh, which I almost buffed, like, I almost just, like, duffed it up right at the end. Um, like I'm doing a three color blend where it's like a dark blue into a light blue. And then that fades into just some white, at like the very tips of the pulse and the white came out speckly of my airbrush. And I said, I, it was like Darth Vader, just no, <laughs> uh, I managed to fix it, but I, I had a panic attack for a hot second. Like, no airbrush, you betrayed me. So now that's fully done and magnetized. So Riptide, ready to freaking go. And I gotta say, I think it looks pretty neat. I don't think I've taken any finished photos. I should probably take some finished photos. Uh, and I also went back to my Commander uh, Iron Tide, and I did plasma weapon effects on all of his guns and his thrusters too. 
So, been a good week for hobbying over here. I also did some 3D printing, and I did some building. Uh, I built, uh, I 3D printed and built three crisis suits that I now am going to have to start painting. Uh, but first I have to magnetize them so that I can swap all their weapons out without any issues. Because of course, I mean, Tau weapons, you just have to magnetize. It is what it Absolutely. is. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I've got to put some little magnets in there now that they're built, and then I have to prime them and zenithal them. Um, and in addition, I did some research. I was hit with a terrible stroke of inspiration over the past two weeks. Uh, we'll talk about it later in the show, but the Slaves to Darkness book coming out later this winter got leaked and it looks really cool. And then a story spawned in my head. And oh no, no, no. All of a sudden I'm considering playing Chaos. Um, so I, I spent time doing some research on if that story makes sense or if it would work. And by the time I got done researching it, it was so good that one, I am now working on potentially making it a fully produced audio drama that we'll put up on this channel. Uh, and two, I ordered a Slaves to Darkness start collecting box so I can just try to paint up these minis to supplement the story in my head. So it was, it was a terrible fugue state of inspiration. And now am I the filthy chaos boy? Uh, yes, but uh, unfortunately you're still like the filthy chaos boy who is like clean cut. Yeah, I I feel like the story I've spawned, it, I, w I was inspired because I wanted to try to make a chaos story uh, that made sense. Because, like, let's be honest, a lot of times in, like, the novels and stuff, it's just kind of, Meow, I hate everyone, chaos! And, like, I, yo! It, it's the most boring shit I've ever read. Like, yeah, dude, I get it. Ennui, nihilism's bad. You didn't never step up to absurdist. I get it, all right? Maybe don't slaughter the populace. So I really wanted to try to <laughs> ask myself, like... <laughs> go up, Joe. Just go up. Keep going. <laughs> I had coffee this morning. I'm a little spicy. Um, yeah, I wanted to ask myself, like, all right, what would really... Like, if I look in my heart of hearts, like, my friends say I'm the one who's incorruptible to chaos. But I don't think that's true, if I'm being honest with myself. What sort of situation would cause me to shatter and reasonably turn to other gods to survive? And uh, that, com that question led me to a little blurb in the Slaves to Darkness battle tome uh, about a warband that just has a couple of sentences of fluff, but I think could make an incredible story. Uh, and a fully defined war band that is sympathetic and also a little horrifying. Um, and I, I would love to put it on a table, especially seeing a, a new Demon Prince model we're going to talk about here in a hot minute. I could customize it to look wonderful. So I've really been in the hobby space this week. I didn't realize it until I just kind of went through it all. But good God, John, there was a lot of hobby happening. Yeah, man. You were amped. You were feeling spicy. Had coffee every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I was a little nervous starting the show. I'm like, Man, I didn't like paint anything Saturday night. You know, my wife was at the paint desk Friday night and Saturday night. So I, I couldn't like take it from her because, you know, I'm a good husband. Uh, but then I realized I, I painted Friday. So I really went one day without painting. And that's not a big deal, you doofus. God. Internal monologues. But yeah, now I'm, uh, I'm sort of just kind of, I'm trying to work ahead of this Tau Crusade thing. So I'm not behind the eight ball. So if I could finish up my next 1000 point step, I will be really good looking towards my 1500 point step. And it'll give me some time in between to work on other stuff, which I think might inspire me like the Sylvaneth, which got some reveals at Warhammer Fest. Speaking of which, let's talk about that. Right, John. Warhammer Fest. Four yes. days of reveals. Yes. How are we going to break this down to try to make it make any sort of sense for the good, good listeners out there? Into three points. <laughs> As we always do, a three-point structure. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll start off with Warhammer 40k, then we're going to head into Age of Sigmar, and then after that, we're going to talk about Horus Heresy. Um, 
full disclosure, I'm probably going to be talking about horse heresy the most. Joe, you're not like amped about this. You're not feeling it, Mr. Krabs. I'm not. Well, like, I think the horse heresy is largely predicated on nostalgia of older Warhammer, which is cool, but I wasn't playing in older Warhammer, so some of that is just kind of lost on me, um, which is fair, but I'm just happy there's new models and stuff people can play. So I'm not poo-poo on it. I just think uh, I will have a lot less interesting words to say beyond, <laughs> yeah, I like tanks. Yeah, tank cool. Tank uh, looks cool. <laughs> but before we get into that, this is our final point. First, we're going to start off with Warhammer 40k. And uh, boy, howdy, I think we should stop at the top, start at the top of the bill with Leagues of Otan. Yeah, so uh, we saw from the banners that they were going to be revealing some Leagues of Otan stuff, which just had me giddy. Just a giddy little goat. Because uh, there were both Leagues of Votan and Sylvaneth banners up there. I'm like, oh my god, is it my birthday? Uh, oh my god, it's my special boy time. It's my special boy day. Uh, and they didn't disappoint Leagues of Votan. Uh, they showed off some... Well, they showed off one model for the Leagues of Votan proper. And then they showed off a Necromunda kill team that are also Space Dwarves. Uh, so the kit we got shown for Leagues of Votan proper is a lady dwarf on a hover trike with a bolt shotgun and a machine gun on the trike. And she is like a Ford scout for the Leagues of Votan, who scouts out the good locations for everyone else to drop at. And this model looks just the right amount of 1960s sci-fi, and I love it. Like, it's all rounded edges... Uh, and like the little hover grills underneath are coppery and beautiful. Uh, and her coat is just incredible. The only nitpick I have, John, is I have a gripe. Yeah? I do. I have a strong gripe. This dwarven lady, she's built like a brick shit house, which is how they should be. But this dwarven lady ain't got no beard, John. <laughs> Why this lady ain't got a beard? Give somebody give this lady a beard. Someone give this lady a beard. I feel strongly about it. In all of my D&D &D campaigns, all the dwarven ladies have beards. Uh, the only thing I do to differentiate uh, is that the man beards are kind of like crinkly and hard like Brillo pads, but the dwarven lady beards are like soft, downy pillows uh, that are oiled and wonderful and lovely. And uh, everybody in my group adores that idea, so now I just want it on everything. Um... If I had the skill, I would green stuff beards onto all the lady dwarves. I would. But I ain't got that skill. But overall, I think this model looks incredible. Um, John, I know you were also jazzed. Uh, yeah. Uh, which, which thing am I allowed to be jazzed about right now in this episode? Because there's many. Uh, you can be jazzed about lady dwarf beards and the trike. Yes. I am, I am jazzed about so much of this Warhammer Fest. The... So I love the League of Otan like lore and I love the models and I think all of the new dwarf stuff is going to be great. Like I think aesthetically it is really filling in a a different kind of niche mm -hmm. in the 40k sphere. But I'm more excited to see what the ramifications for the whole setting is from League of Otan than playing the faction itself. Yeah. Uh, it brings a freshness that I think the setting needs that's more than just an updated range or like it, bigger primaris marines like i think we needed something that wasn't imperial and isn't xenos and isn't a chaos faction that is going to show us more of the setting than just nah because it's a much more nuanced area and i'm the, the models keep coming out and they keep looking great and are we going to talk about the dumpy looking hilarious little yeah. dwarf dudes from necromunda yeah we are uh they also showed off a necromunda kill team that are a bunch of miners it <laughs> The only way I could describe them is like if y'all have played the Dark Souls games, the Onion Knight with like the big rotund armor and the big rotund helmet and the big rotund like greaves, it looks like that with the machine gun. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. It's so dumb looking, but I love it. <laughs> like they look so doofy. They're just like the juggernaut, but itty bitty with shotguns. And I love that so much. It hurts. Um, they just, I know everybody have said like, oh, they're just like little bundles of armor with legs. I'm like, yeah, y'all, I played Elden Ring. They're like the little battle jars and I love it. Don't change a thing. 
Uh, they're just the right amount of doofy for me, and I think they're cool. I don't play Necromunda, so I probably won't get the box, but I'm really glad they exist. Uh, their lore is sort of like they wear the heavy armor to protect themselves from the splashback of all the rocks while they're mining with their heavy machinery, but it also doubles to protect them from gunshots and stuff. And similar with their mining implements, it can blast rock, or it could blast people. <laughs> And if you come to stop them from getting what they came here for, you'll find that fact out. And I just, I love that. Huge fan. It's very Deep Rock Galactic, and I love that immensely. Rock and stone. Rock and stone. Uh, and then moving on, John, there is so much chaos. <laughs> like, so much chaos. I looked at my notes and it's just so much new chaos. Uh, so they uh, they revealed that they're going to be putting out a bunch of new chaos kits that you can take in a whole bunch of factions. So they're going to be putting out new cultists. They're going to be putting out corrupted cultists. They're going to be putting out like super corrupted cultists, cultist HQs, and a bunch of new possessed uh, space marine models, as and on well top as of the peace de resistance, John, the big one, the prince. Yes, but included with the mortals, right, is the kill team of Her of Traitor Guard. Yeah. Which will probably be playable in that book. Now, I, I, it's not going to be like full Traitor Guard with like tanks and shit or whatever, but like it's still cool. Like it's rad. And then we get new possessed models that look amazing. Like they look. Oh, God, they're terrifying. so good. I have no urge to play Chaos Space Marines, but those possessed models are just wonderful. And then the super possessed models. <laughs> <laughs> and then new demon prince and i'm gonna tell you that new demon prince had me so excited so like one of my favorite memories of playing chaos was the first time i got a demon prince kit like me and our editor seth we both got a demon prince kit together and we spent a night when we were living together as roommates building this thing like we, we each built our own little demon prince we built him up and we painted him we played them against each other because he was playing Thousand Sons at the time. I think I was playing Word Bears because it was weird. <clears throat> and like having these two like factions that were fighting each other, and it was very, very fun. And I want to experience that again with a new kit that doesn't look like poo poo. Yeah. The new kit does look incredible. The new kit looks amazing. And I'm <laughs> going to build it. And, and what I love the most it. is that it has a it has a cornucopia of bits inside of it. So it pulls not just double duty, but like sex tuple duty. So one, it has bits in there that you could build it to look like an expressly 40k demon prince with like the backpack and stuff. Two, it has bits in there for you can build it to look like a fantasy model, so it can look expressly Age of Sigmar without any of the tech stuff in it. Three. You can build it with sword or axe. Four, you can build it with wings or some sort of trophy rack on its back, which I might also look different depending on setting. Five, you can then build it to have a head that is sort of undivided or a expressly zinch, nurgle, corn, or slanesh head. There's multiple undivided heads as well. Yeah, so like this kit you get one box of, you could build, like John and I could each get a kit. Our editor, Seth could get a kit. Our buddy Corwin could get a kit and we could all sit there and build one. And independently, our stuff will look entirely different. And I think, I think it's a callback to some of the older kits that GW used to put out too, where there was so many bits in it that if you got creative with uh, some other stuff, you could easily convert extra models out of it. Yeah. And without like, a problem. That's great. Like, Hot take. That's amazing. I, I love the idea that I can buy this Chaos De Demon Prince kit, I can build a whole model out of it, and then I can go, like, I don't know, take a G.I. Joe fucking action figure or something. Or, like, a, what are, what's those uh, things everyone freaks freaks out about in the GameStop? The... Bionicles? No, not Bionicles. The That's big what I heads. freaked out about in GameStop. Big uh, heads. Pops, pop vinyls? Yeah, pop vinyls. They got like a pop vinyl, add a bunch of chaos bits to it. Who yeah, they got a weird fucking looking demon prince now. <laughs> I really hope that someone out there is like, Bionicle? I haven't thought about a Bionicle in two decades. <laughs> but to be fair, you could also take a Bionicle and mix it with the demon prince kit and make a hell of a goddamn demon prince. <laughs> I feel like it's going to take some green stuff, but I'd say no. And also, big plus side, it'll have karate chop action. So, y'all, <laughs> huge win. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I think the Demon Prince kit is a colossal victory. Like, it's great for AOS, it's great for 40k, and just in general, I like kits that have a crap ton of options. Because, you know, it feels like you get more of your money's worth out of it that way. Um, and if y'all, like, if you and your friends wanted to get together and just, like, combine bits after you're done, you could probably make whole other Demon Princes. No problem. And just from your collective bits. I'm going to be buying at least one box of the new Demon Prince kit. Because they've done it. GW found it in their hearts to no longer be fucking cowards. And they gave me a World Leaders book. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be getting the Demon Prince box for that World Leaders army. I love it. You got me again. I love World Leaders. You've shown us no models, and I couldn't be more jazzed. Yeah. <laughs> they did confirm that World Leaders is coming. So we've heard like the rumors and leaks forever. So it's not a surprise, but it is a good confirmation. Hey, it's right. World Eaters are here. Well, they're coming. I just, I would have liked to have seen one model, just a crumb of model, but alas. Yeah, it's yet. all right. Uh, I'm just going to stay living in my joy that they showed me four separate, like, chain axes in the article, and they confirmed that we're getting new Berserkers, we are getting new Terminators, we are getting new models entirely, like new concept models entirely, and we're getting some old concept mo models brought back. Um, mm hmm we can assume there'll be an Agron. We can assume, you know, Karn's going to be in it. We don't know if he gets a new model or not. We're going to assume that there's probably going to be some new characters. Might be like a cavalry unit or something. Regardless, I'm excited. Probably going to buy every kit. I'm going to play the shit out of it. This will be fantastic. But we ain't got all that kind of time in this episode to be talking about world leaders because I could just spend the rest of this episode talking about it. Yeah, yeah, we're going to have to move on, John, but we will make a full World Leaders episode when we get that release. Don't you yeah. worry. We'll, well, we'll do it in a World Leaders episode then. We might do one ahead of time for speculation about, like, this is what we would like to see, and this is some of the history of World Leaders, because there's a lot there. It's an under-known about faction. I think most people know that it's uh, blood for the blood god, kill, maim, burn, angry, 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 hit people with axe. Which isn't wrong. But there's more there. It's just a little more underneath. But, I mean, I guess with that, move into Age of Sigmar, which I'm also terribly excited about. Uh, but first, John, you get a new Skaven model. I do. I get a new, I do, do need get a new Skaven model. It's a and... new hero. Well, a new sculpt for an old hero. Yes. So they it revealed. Is, it uh, is exciting. I really like the new... Death what do they Master call it? Model. A Deathmaster? Yeah, yeah, it's a Deathmaster. It's an Eshin model, so it's Clan Eshin, it's a ninja rat, and I'm really excited about the ninja rat. It's great. Huge fan. Kind of wish that there would have been more for Skaven, considering some of those kits are 30 years old now. Yeah, but, but... I made the joke before the show, but I really mean it. The actual Skaven start collecting box is just a 3D printer. Yes. That's, that, that's how you build Skaven. Uh, cause the, the, I mean, there are just some units. There are some five man units that cost a hundred dollars because you have to buy all the individual characters in pewter. It's ridiculous. And they look awful. Some yeah, of those pewter terrible. sculpts do not hold up. Like they hold up for me because I remember seeing them as a child. Like, but as a new player, they are probably going to try to compare them next to the death master and be like, what the fuck is this? Fair like, question. And I don't have an answer. <laughs> Yeah, so like that was a little bit of a disappointing thing. It is exciting. They're going to get a new book, so I'll be able to play my rats this year. I'm I'm happy. I'm going mm -hmm. to be excited about it regardless. I'm just disappointed we didn't get to see more kits. Not so much for myself. More for new players, because I don't think we're going to get a lot of new Skaven players until they do, because a lot of that's it's just inaccessible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is a force that can be hard to get into, but with 3D printing on the rise, if you have a 3D printer and you're wanting to get into Skaven, y'all, it's a great time. Have at it. Um, there's a bunch of STL files out there that are delightful. Uh, and for me, they then moved into Sylvaneth, which I, I expected like a new Sylvaneth book and a hero. Yeah, like yeah. I expected like one thing. Yeah, I thought it would be here's a new hero and here's your book. And I would have been happy with that. I'm going to be honest. But we got more. So much more. So uh, we we are getting a new hero. It's the Lady of Vines. 
And if y'all have listened to the Realmgate Wars, you'll know who she is. She's like the, the most dutiful servant of the Ever Queen who died uh, in the Realmgate Wars, spoiler alert, uh, to help uh, a Gardas Steel Soul kind of stick it to Nurgle. And she was a cool character, but Sylvaneth don't really stay dead. You can replant them and they will come back with the magic of life. And she's back with a new form that is so cool. She's got like these Doc Ock looking uh, vine weapons coming out of her back. And she just looks delightful. She's so angry and I love it. Um, we then got a new archer unit that are tree revenants, which not really my thing. I prefer like the actual trees of the army, but it still looks cool. They're tree revenants with short bows. And on their backs are uh, sort of like flutter sprites. For the Sylvanath, there are these creatures in the forest called sprites, which are just magic bugs or insects. They can look like anything, any sort of creature that are just sort of imbued with magic of the forest. And uh, these are sort of like dragonfly looking deals that grab the back of the revenants and fly them around like backpacks. And... Uh, so good. Right? That's awesome. It's so awesome. Uh, and we've seen this before on one of the heroes that had a bug that flew her around. And you could sacrifice the bug to eat an attack for you, but then you lost the fly keyword. Um, so this is just that expanded. You know, because your little bug died. It's so sad. Uh, I'd never used that rule because I couldn't bring myself to, to kill the bug. Um, and then even better. Like, okay, I'm... I think the bow's... Dudes look cool, and that's cool. I'm glad people have it. I'm probably not going to take them, but it's just not for me. But what is for me is they then revealed that there are going to be giant, sort of like grasshopper, dragonfly, locust insects that are ridden by tree revenants with lances. And these are like your flying lancer cavalry that give you hard mobility on the battlefield, which is something we need so bad it hurts. And I just, one, I think it's great mechanically, but two, it, the look is 10 out of 10. Give me six of them. I want them. And they can be built in two different ways to fill two different purposes. Uh, so, you know, you can either build them to be like little utility creatures that uh, they give your units bonuses because they like gather up their, the Sylvaneth hearts when they die. They call them the Lamentiri. They're like little gems inside of every Sylvaneth that if you harvest it, you can replant it and they grow back. So they can fly around and grab those and give you abilities from death. Or you give them lances instead and then they're big shock cavalry. I kind of like the shock cavalry more for flavor, but like, I love options. So 10 out of 10. I am very excited about it. I did not expect this many kits, but I'm super glad we have them. Because uh, I am so, so, so ready to be woefully in the honeymoon stage with my Sylvaneth army yet again. Because as the cover picture for this podcast will tell you, I'm a Sylvaneth stan. And Just it's probably coming out die. this summer. Like, relatively oh, yeah. soon. It says very soon, so I'm assuming by, like, June. Or like I'm mid -June. thinking June seems realistic. So we can have a Skaven versus Sylvaneth weekend. Where we new Battletome on new Battletome. Yeah, new Battletome on new Battletome. Grill on... Burgers on, beer cold, models out, Hawaiian <laughs> shirts on. Like, let's go. <laughs> Hawaiian shirts open. Like, it's true. Open. <laughs> it's going to be a blast. Yeah, I'm just, like, I'm unabashedly excited. I know there's some salt in, like, the Sylvaneth group for stuff. But, like, y'all, I just, I don't agree with any of that. And I don't have the energy. I'm just excited. I want the yeah. new book. I just... I want to see what's in there. I can't wait to make some new armies. I haven't gotten to like make new Sylvaneth armies in a long, long time. I just can't wait. My trees have been off to the side for the past six months or so, just patiently waiting for this day to come. And it's here. And like a short, a short tangent. I kind of want to get into about just these releases in general. Cause there, there was a lot of salt and there was a lot of not salt. And I'm not trying to say that like, if you're upset that you didn't get stuff that you wanted, that it's invalid. But I would also like to say that, like, try to find the excitement where you can get it, right? Like, am I happy that mm -hmm. I'm only getting one model for Skaven? No. 
But am I still going to be very excited to play this book and have fun with my buds with the models I already have? Yeah. Just means I'm not buying more plastic and I'm going to buy the plastic elsewhere. Or spend money on other things in the hobby, like paints or maybe a different game. Mm -hmm. Like, be excited for what you get and don't give them too much of a rent-free space in your head about being mad. Yeah. Uh, try, try to enjoy the stuff. I don't want to rain on my own parade when I got a thing. Like, just have a little bit of fun, y'all. And I only share that little kernel of knowledge because I spent years doing that to myself. I used to be that turd on the internet forums who was like, nah, we haven't gotten a new Chaos Space Marine Codex for all of 6th and 7th edition. Give it to me. I mean, it was weird when they didn't give everybody a, at least a codex per edition, but... Yeah, but it, it was it was a different time. It was a different so, time. Sometimes you used an orc codex for five years, six <laughs> years even, sometimes seven. At least you didn't have to keep up with the, uh, the book treadmill. I remember when you got one supplement book a year, if you were lucky. <laughs> 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 and you had to walk to the game store uphill both ways to get it in the snow do you remember templates i remember templates you know who else remembers templates the horse Pepper heresy <laughs> pepperidge farm remembers um they then moved into a reveal that i don't think was originally on the reveal plan um they showed off the Ogroid Theradons. I think you mean the Bulgors. They aren't Bulgors. They're they distinct. look a lot like Bulgors. <laughs> they're more like I don't know. They're kind of Minotaurish, but they're also Ogreish. Like uh, they don't read like Bulgors for me. But they would make great Bulgor conversion bases. If you wanted to animal them up, absolutely. Um, but they are a sort of like. Uh, rank and file type of troop that we've only seen as HQ heroes from this point before. And now they're going to make them like a walking elite unit of like three man hard hitting big fellas. And that's going to be for the new Slaves to Darkness book that is coming out sometime this winter. Uh, and this is a cool release, but I don't think it was originally on their schedule because it's way too far out. However, as I mentioned earlier, the entire slaves to darkness book got leaked um like we we know the rules we know all the new models that are coming uh we know that these were in there because we saw their rules and their art before this reveal show uh we know that they have another chaos lord on demonic mount coming uh we know they have a named version of him coming we knew that the Demon Prince was coming before they showed it because we saw all those rules and pictures of the different builds we know that they're coming out with another Chaos Chosen kit with the new book. Because, again, all of that was leaked. Um, so I think when that happened, it was not something that they did themselves or saw coming. But they're just kind of rolling with the punches, which I actually think is a good thing. Like, if the cat's out of the bag, just show it to us. Like, it, it's okay. You yeah. don't have to keep it secret. And, like... Man, some of like the Warcry stuff mixed with the Slaves of Darkness stuff has made the Slaves of Darkness book a large book. Like, yeah. it's huge. And it looks like... it. I really like that AOS has some of these factions that look like you can just build them a thousand different ways. You can. That, if you're thousands. into like sitting on the pooper and building lists, I mean, you could be there for hours building lists for Slaves to Darkness. Swap it out battle lines and battle line ifs and HQs and sub factions. Uh, it'd be a time. So I'm actually excited for that battle tome to get here. As I mentioned at the beginning of the episode, I think some of that looks very cool and would also serve for me as a good loner faction. Cause currently if someone says, Hey, I want to try age of Sigmar. I don't have an army. Can I use one of yours? I, I, I actually don't have one. I could give a new player without feeling bad like sylvaneth and ko are a little too complicated so slaves to darkness would fill the simpler role because well they kind of all do what it, they look like they do there's not a lot of ludo narrative dissonance in there mm -hmm. like what what are the guys with the heavy arm and the shields do it looks like they just kind of stand there and hold the line kind of like they, they look like they got heavy armor and shields hot damn they do exactly that man the guy on a 
big monster with a huge axe looks like he hits really hard. Hey, what do you know? You're right. He hits like a truck. Good job. <laughs> it just, it helps people to like figure out their battle plans when they're new. So, you know, that book's going to pull double duty for me. But I, I'm sure they're going to show off the other stuff that we've already seen in the coming weeks. Uh, they also revealed briefly that they're going to drop a new General's Handbook, as they do every year. But, you know, they showed us the cover and we know it's coming. Uh, and they also showed off that uh, a sort of Cities of Sigmar book is coming, but it's probably going to be the, uh, what do they call it? Not the Crusade, the Dawnbringer Crusade, yeah. Of people, like, going out into the mortal realms to reclaim uh, their land that was taken from them when the Age of Chaos happened. And we already knew this was coming because logic, but, you know, they confirmed it, I guess. That's cool. Yeah. Also, though, the big thing I think is neat is they confirmed that the rules will be free. Well, not rules. The points will not be in the book and will be free online. For both systems, both 40k and Age of Sigmar. Like, you will no yes. longer have to... Like, if you're a more casual player, you don't have to buy that every six months book release or every year book release anymore. Not that many of you did anyways. Um, so, I, I think it's just, just a smart move. Like, I think that it's interesting. And now they turn these new, comp like, grand tournament packs or season books into what they should be if they're going to exist. And that is optional rules to play the game casually with your buds. Or if you're tr or a reactionary book, which honestly shouldn't even be a book, it should be an online data slate, um, to changes in the meta to catch up with releases. Because in a game as vast as this, balance is very difficult. Yeah, I mean, I was never a fan of having to pay for points in the first place. But in the internet age, it only feels a little, it only feels more odd. Because you could just upload all of this for free. Yeah, so good change. Big fan. Uh, we should on GW every once in a while on the show. But this is genuinely good. Like, this is a genuinely good thing to do. Mm -hmm. And now if they could only do it with more stuff. Uh, your game's expensive enough as it is. People don't want to have to buy all the books. Especially when they're not codexes. Because at least codexes have the benefit of being pretty. And having lots of very good art in it. And some fluff. Yeah. And some fluff. Uh, and lastly, they revealed two new models that on their own are fairly simple, but I'm very excited for because of what it means for the future. So they're giving us a new Caradron Overlord General and a new Soulblight Vampire Hero. Oh my God, the Soulblight Vampire Hero. <laughs> God, he looks so good. I need a hero and it's that one. Like that's the <laughs> one they <I> need. <laughs> yeah, um, and the Caradron uh, just looks wonderful as well. They're both 10 out of 10 models. Um, and they kind of told us about the story for both of them, and they are tied to black library novels that are going to be dropping alongside the models. So the Caradron Overlord is going to have his own book, where he is sort of like this wheelie and dealy, schemy, slimy, charismatic captain, who some people in bars all say that he's the richest man alive, and the other half all say that he owes them money, uh, and everyone is graced with his presence and it, it it's just fun like we all love captain jack sparrow y'all just put him in a caradron ship love it uh in the other hero the hollow king i think is what he's referred to as is a vampire lord who took on the curse of the soul blight what do they call it the blood kiss the soul blight curse to save his kingdom in a long begotten time but the ravages of years take everything. And the people he sacrificed for are long dead. His kingdom destroyed and his life without purpose. But he still exists because it he's immortal. So now he is sort of traveling the mortal realms looking for causes and uh, sort of doing adventures as this dark anti-hero. And they're like... Fan. You know, do you want this? Like, yeah, y'all. Blade is, like, my favorite movie of all time. I'm so in. I'm so in. Give it to me. Just give me this model. Uh, and I think these models are great. And I'm actually excited for both the books as well. But what I'm really excited about is uh, I want to see more of this in the future. This is a great way to release new models. 
It's so good. Whether yeah, you want I, to take the actual heroes or use them for conversions, like it's it's just wonderful all around. And I really like the concept of GW releasing a novel, right? And centering an entire unit or a hero or an HQ piece or like a vehicle and around that in that novel and then releasing a kit alongside of it and then having like the rules updates for free online for it yeah and have it slide into whatever that current codex is i think that's a really good business model like i think that is very good you get people to want to buy a novel learn about the thing then get the model put it in their force very cool very nice huge fan i want to see more of that like that kind of like treadmill i like more than codex release with a bunch of new kits all at once that then also contributes to power creep and yada, 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 yada. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I think this is good. I also just really love a vampire model and there, this has happened multiple times, right? Where we've seen like an individual model come out separate from the rest of the release. And when I see that, I go, Oh man, I can start soul black rifle with army. Man. Like I saw that vampire and I was like, yeah. I can start soul black rifle with army. It's simply from a hero and a novel. Right. Mm -hmm. like it was is very good uh and like it's a marketing trick it's a marketing trick that got me and i liked it i liked that marketing trick <laughs> it's a trick that i'm enjoying so please do more of it like you you found the golden goose don't stop i'll buy your 25 dollar novel and your 35 dollar hero god damn it you got me <laughs> tell me more stories games workshop I will question every $60 video game purchase, but not this book and model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm... God damn it, John. You got me. I've been wounded. Got it down. I couldn't even dodge it. Yeah, I, I think it's very exciting, and I, I'm going to read both the novels, and I'm going to have a blast, and I'm going to get both them heroes, and I can't wait. So, John, we have one more bit to this show. Yes, we have one more bit to this show. And I don't know if I have a whole lot to say, so I'm going to just kind of lead us through some of it. First and foremost, they fully showed off the big, 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 big box again. Chock full of beaky marines. Uh, for what, what was it? The Horus Heresy? Is that yeah. a... The Horus Heresy. Is that an Egyptian coup? That'd be way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be more likely to play the game. Um, Yeah, so the Horus Heresy got announced a while back and they showed a lot more of it this this Warhammer Fest as we kind of expected we knew it was coming when they showed everything else like that we were going to see more of it what we didn't expect is two things for for me at least right and that mm -hmm. is I did not expect for them to come up with more horror heresy novels and they are going to and I don't think it's just these two books I think that they are going to make a whole new series because they added a new brand logo to it and a new binding so I my theory is that uh, they're going to continue the Siege of Terra, and then there's a period of time between the 41st millennium and the Siege of Terra that is full of a lot of shit that happens. And I think they're going to expand outwardly into that for the Horse Heresy, right? Like, you're going to end up having the game, the, the game setting split into two, which is 30k leading up into the Indominus Era, and then Indominus Era forward. I mm -hmm. think that's going to end up being this the setting that's just yeah. a theory i think that's rad like there's a lot of cool stuff to go into with that like the badab war yada yada like there's just there's tons mm -hmm. but yeah, the I other think th that's actually really interesting uh, i know a lot of people are like oh they're gonna fit maybe they're just gonna finish the horse heresy with the siege of terra <laughs> y'all there's no way there's no way. Yeah, there's a thousand other things that happen to make the setting go from like a mostly non-religious, terrifying totalitarian empire that takes over the galaxy and then it crumbles under the weight of its own hu one man's hubris to turbo-religious psychopaths who do not believe in the progression of anything anymore and slowly crumbling dystopia like there's a lot of coups there's a lot of political stuff that happens there's a lot of wars there's extra heresies like there are more revolutions there are lots of things that happen there's not like the horse heresy was just the biggest one we'll mm -hmm. see what else happens you know there's lots of interfaction wars between different legions like entire sections of space uh, there's even more crusades that happen 
yeah, there's a lot more story to tell and a lot more money to be made. Yeah. Um, there's no way that they're going to leave that just sitting there. And Horse Heresy's gotten to the point where a lot of the people who remember the old lore and the old stuff, or people have grown up with these books at this point, that this is now nostalgia for them, right? Like, mm -hmm. this is a thing that, like, some kids in high school probably started reading the Horse Heresy novels and are getting older, and they're like, ah, yes, I want, this is the thing that I liked. They don't necessarily, aren't super into the 40K thing. They're into the Horse Heresy thing. Um, and it's, it's, it's fair it's, enough. Yeah, and it's pretty clear they're trying to do like a parody on both for both settings, right? Like you're going to have the old world for Age of Sigmar and Age of Sigmar. You're also going to have Horus Heresy and 40K. Like, mm -hmm. it's fine. I think that I'm more likely to play the Horus Heresy game than I am to play the old world game. Just because I, I, Age of Sigmar has grasped me much more than fantasy ever did. Yeah. But back to the Horus Heresy thing. The other big piece of news is that they have said they have not said the price. But they did say that the leaked price shown that was leaked earlier this week was wrong. Because I think they changed it. Because uh, it'll be less than $300 for the starter set. And that starter set's big. It's got the core rule book. It's got 40 marines. It's got two heroes. It's got a Spartan assault tank. And it's got a big dreadnought and 10 terminators. Like, it is damn near almost an entire Horus Heresy Force in one box. That's a hell of a starter kit. But not three hundred dollars starter kit. No, um, I think two fifty or two hundred, great. Like I think that if they made this closer to Indominus style release, we're like, yeah, it's going to be a loss leader. But for every, you know, because let's be honest, someone's going to go buy that book and then they're going to go buy the new Kratos tank or a Rhino or a bunch of the upgrade sprues or a bunch of the codexes, or they're going to buy more Marines or yada yada yada. Like it is the doorway to making this a successful uh, game to add to the roster. And I think yeah. if they bumble the starter box, they ruin the game. Like I, I don't know if they'd ruin it, but they would definitely set it back heavily. Well, like it, it's clear their intention is not to keep it as it currently is, which is like a fringe game for people who are super into it, right? They're trying to give it a more wide appeal, like a mass appeal. And mm -hmm. if you can't create a good entry point, you're not going to create a good mass appeal because then the only people who are going to be playing it are the same people who've been playing it. Yeah. Um, I think there's something to that. So that that's exciting. I, I I have a certain fondness for this system because it reminds me of the edition I played the most of way back when, which is 6th and 7th edition. And it's very similar to that in rules-wise. And uh, they showed off the Kratos tank and they showed off some of its like weapon profiles. And I went, oh... I remember those days. Like it's got a, <laughs> it's got a heavy blast template weapon as one of the ammo types. It's got like the pinning rule on it. It's got armor bane. There's no damage characteristic whatsoever. It's just very good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in it. Uh, I believe our editor Seth is also very interested in it. So we we might end up playing some more seriously. We might talk about some horror seriously on the show. Joe might not be involved in us talking about the horse heresy because he's not particularly into it. But I, I'm I'm okay with being here to help, but I just don't have a lot of intelligent thought about it. You're just like, yeah, that's neat, that's cool and all, but like, why the fuck you gotta have armor values on on a front side and rear? Like, what's wrong? With, are you playing 40k historical? Yes, yes, we are. Yeah, for me, it's just I've played a little bit of seventh, and it was way too much crunch across way too many models, and uh, well, it's not for me. What's interesting about the Horse Heresy is it takes that level of crunch and streamlines it in the opposite direction that 8th Edition did. 8th Edition streamlined the core rules. Um, Horse Heresy streamlines the, it by having everything kind of having more rules that make sense. There's less weird stuff. Like, yes, the anti-tank gun has Armor Bane. That makes sense. Well, what does Armor Bane do? It means you reroll wounds against vehicles. Oh, okay, cool. Like, this Blast Template goes over here. Like, there's a lot less to know because there's a lot less factions overall. Um, but is it which, still 15 pages of rules to walk through a building? I don't know. I don't know if read the rulebook to see that. Because um, that was the thing that turned me off. I was like, all right, I'm going to move my guys in here for cover. I'm like, well, here's this big section about all the things you have to do to make sure that you can move in through there. What? Why? Why? Just, I have a tape measure. What? Just... They, get, they hop in a window, my dude. Like, what, what What else do you want from me? 
Um, so I'm interested to see how that changes. Yeah, I think that they're going to have to streamline because I think the core of seventh edition works really well, right? Like where it's got armor values on the vehicles. You can't. You don't have big buffing heroes. You have to implant like characters into squads to give those squads buffs. Like yada yada yada. Like there's lots of differences in it that makes a different kind of game. But I think a lot of the problems with sixth and seventh edition, and I hope that doesn't carry over to the new Horus Heresy rule set is that there were so many splat books that broke the rules they set up and then stacked on top of them to make them stupid. You know, that's where we got the Death Star rules, right? Where you could have a unit of uh, Space Wolf Terminators with Storm Shields that had, like, a one-up re-rolling uh, armor save with a two-up re-rolling involve save with a two-up re-rolling uh, feel-no-pain save. That's so moronic. Yeah, that's it's awful. it was it was just terrible. Um but I don't think that's going to be a problem here. We'll see. I I don't want to put my stamp of approval on it until I've read the book. But speaking of books, there's only going to be two codexes. Loyalist and uh Traitor. <laughs> mhm. Mm uh, they Which did is say interesting. it's very different than what I'm used to in 40k. Yeah, um the the other thing is it seems like they they're going to be adding more factions later so probably like orcs probably like admech probably like guard uh the interesting thing about horse heresy for me rules wise is it seems like a system they're trying to build and not have a codex treadmill on mm -hmm. which is fascinating like it seems it, anathema to their business model but if it, but if it is a game that is meant to not be their money maker, right? Like 40k Age of Sigmar money makers. But if Horus Heresy is meant to be this game that gets a lot of people in and it's a steady game that people play and it keeps an interest for like older players to keep them hooked into the setting and to buy stuff when it comes out, I think that's neat. I like the idea of having a game for this setting that I love that I just buy a core cool rulebook once every three years that comes with a, a codex that I have to buy once every three years or four years or five years or whatever. And then I play with the same models. And then when they release a new tank kit, I go, Ooh, pretty tank and buy the tank. And that's it. Mm -hmm. That's all I got to do. I don't got to worry about like a bunch of da bad uh, balanced data sheet updates, yada, 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 because the game is inherently more balanced, right? Like people have been screaming about wanting a balanced 40 K. Okay. Well, quite literally all the models are in the same, <laughs> are the same. <laughs> like, the only difference is the special rules the factions get, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's yeah, a much more I mean, balanced game. I think I would be more willing to try Horus Heresy if I don't have to buy new models. Like, if they give me rules to use my orcs, sure, I'll give it a whirl. But up to this point, the thing that's been hard is that, like, you can't use any of your modern Primaris with it. So you have to, up till now, spend, like, a bajillion dollars on Forge World models, which well, was just rough. Yeah, um, and I think they, they fixed a lot of that issue, too, because, like, you can proxy backwards, right? Because they scaled up these these new Marines. Like, in the new mm -hmm. Horse Heresy box set, the scaled up, they're, they're scaled to be, like, Primaris-sized Marines. And not be like these tiny little boys. They did look a little doofy before. <laughs> yes. They still look a little doofy, but a doofy that I love. Doofy, they're less doofy. Yeah, beakies um, for life. Yeah, that for me has been the giant barrier that like one, you had to buy all through Forge World. Two, you could not use your existing models. And then three, it was sort of dense and impenetrable. But if you tell me, Joe, you could play this with me without having to spend any money on new models and just use your orcs. Yeah, give it a whirl. Yeah. And I think that there there offers a lot of stuff they can go back in time and touch on with the Horus Heresy. Like, I imagine them going, oh, uh, here's the orc book for Horus Heresy, right? Where you can, where you can play a bunch of orcs. Mm -hmm. Also, he, in that book, it explains the entirety of the Ulanor campaign, where yeah. the Emperor fought against... The org, the, the largest orc empire ever in existence. Like, that'd be cool. I'd love to see that. I want to know what happened there. Or like, if they add a splat book where now you can play Custodes and uh, Eldar, and it's the story of, like, the war in the webway. Yeah. Just use your existing Custodes and Eldar model, but buy the book. Yeah. Uh, you know, they Custodes were a big part of the Horse Heresy. I want to see them get a faction, you know? 
And like, they're not going to release new custodies models. You'll probably be able to use the custody models from 40K. And I think that's where a lot of the crossover will happen. Like, yeah. When you don't have to buy new models, you just play book. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I love it. Like I'm super into it. And I, I, like I said before, I think that this Horus heresy setting will extend past the siege of Terra and continue going. It's just easier to call it the Horus heresy than to just like, ah, yes, the, the pre times or whatever. The before times. Yeah. Cause you've got stuff like the iron curtain that happens. You've got the entirety of the codex Astartes problems. Like there's just so much, there's so much yeah. to get into. Um, but the other things announced for Horus Heresy is, I mentioned it earlier, the new Kratos super heavy tank. And a uh, Rhino. And a Rhino. And uh, weapon upgrade sprues, so you can just buy like 10. I, I believe it has 10 of each special weapon option. Yeah, so And like, heavy weapon option. This does fix a problem that was really frustrating for me for 40k, especially before I had a 3D printer. And like, you would get a box of stuff. Like, you, let's say you bought a box of... I don't know, Chaos Space Marines. Like the heavy assault Chaos Space Marines. What do they call them? Not Devastators. Um, Hellblasters? No. The guys with the heavy weapons. And you bought a heavy weapon team of Chaos Space Marines. And it tells you that you could have like five of each of them. You choose the gun on every dude. But they only give you one of each gun. <laughs> so you cannot possibly make them WYSIWYG. Before this, what they fully expected you to do was to buy multiple boxes to get the bits and then build them that way, which I don't think too many people did. I think a lot of people just had them recasters send it to them or they converted now just 3D print. But uh, for people who don't have 3D printers or don't want to deal with that, they are now going to be selling boxes that are just those bits. Just, so, like, if you wanted five chain guns, well, here's a box of chain guns. Have at it. Um, or five last cannons. Well, here's a box of last cannons. Put them on whatever you want. And I, I also, think that does fix an interesting problem. I also think that selling ten of each weapon option is amazing. Like, you can buy yeah. one of those boxes and probably good for your whole army. Hopefully, yeah. So, uh, and the question, I mean, there's still the question of price. So like, I'm not going to come down thumbs up or thumbs down yet. Cause it's going to depend on price, but I like in theory that they are fixing a problem that they have had for a long time. I can guarantee you it's going to be cheaper than it was to buy all the upgrades, Bruce and Forge World for all this. Yeah. But that's a bar so low an ant would trip over it, John. I, I mean, know, <laughs> but, but like that's, that is the perspective. Like, um, Particularly when it comes to Horus Heresy. Like, a lot of these people have been playing this game when it was costing them quadruple. Yeah, forget that noise. Yeah, no, thank you. Like, and, and I think that's great. Uh, but the final thing to bring up about the Horus Heresy is that way back when they had another Horus Heresy plastic kit called the Burning of Prospero. That was a, a fight between the Thousand Suns and the Space Wolves. In which they released a bunch of, like, plastic marines before Indominus came out. And... This had two special characters in it. It had a Thousand Suns special character who's got like his resplendent robes and his crimson and looks like an Egyptian space wizard, uh, but not all zinchi, just like mm -hmm. noble. And then there was a space wolf uh, special model who has like this lightning claw and this like big knife and this long beard. And he just got this great blue gray armor looking just amazing. Uh, both of those were amazing characters that a lot of people have been wanting back for years in those communities, and they're re-releasing them as plastic kits. And I think that's great. And it sets a very interesting precedent with GW, and that is that they are willing to go back almost six fucking years, like five, six years, and pull out character models from a, a box set that they never released clan packs for and do it. Yeah. Uh, which is which good. Is cool. I mean, like, more options is more better. Give people what they want. <laughs> I, I like that a lot. So if, you know, if you wanted to get these characters before and you never got to, well, here's your chance. You could buy them. Which I think is just fun. Um, so I think that fairly well covers Warhammer Fest, and I hope that it all made sense. Uh, largely, I felt very positive about Warhammer Fest. 
Yeah, I, I, we've been pretty negative about GW lately. I think uh, a lot of people have because they've been making really dumb moves. But most of this was good. Most of this was thumbs up, like on the upswing. Yeah, very I happy. Mean, the only thing, like the worst feeling I have is the stuff that I kind of went, well, you, you just wasted my time. You didn't actually show us anything. But a vast majority of this was all good stuff to see. I mean, even the smaller stuff that, like the Deathmaster, it's just a hero, but they had a trailer that was so cool that it felt wonderful. And it sort of preempted the sculpt, which also looked great. Um, so the energy was good. The only downside is you had to like tune in over four days, but they did do a really good job of putting out articles for every individual thing. Uh, so you could make sure you caught up on all of it. And uh, yeah, I think this is a good direction. I hope we keep trending this way. And I hope future reveals are like this, where it's more uh, meat and potatoes and less filler. Because this was good stuff. Really good stuff. And uh, for y'all out there, if you have your own thoughts on the reveals, or if you think, uh, you know, if you have some questions on reveals that you want our opinions on, or some ideas on how to maybe get into some of the forces that are talked about in this and you're not sure how to do it, feel free to reach out to us on social media. They're always, like, the DMs are always open. Tweet at us, whatever. And uh, we're more than happy to help you. And we'll also love to hear y'all's opinions and see if you also felt as positively as we did about this one. And uh, if you want to be an absolute champion of the show, share it around. Maybe you got some friends who are a little more casual than you in the hobby, and they might have missed all the reveals. Go ahead and save them from having to read a, a absolute metric ton of articles and just send them the video. Might help them out a little bit, and it'll help us while you're at it. And uh, we're going to get back to the hobby desk so I can crack the whip and force John to keep painting. Um, but... Beyond that, we're working on some stuff for the show behind the scenes that I'm actually very excited about. Uh, we're going to be trying to fulfill some promises from the end of last year and see if we can't do you right by y'all. Yeah. But in the meantime, that's been all of our opinions. Bonafide, Kentucky Fried. We'll see y'all in the next episode. Yow!